Hello friends, today we are going to seek out the tone of the one and only Jimmy Page. Now normally I encourage people to find their own voice on the guitar and not try and match the tone of their guitar heroes and match the exact licks note for note, but in this specific video I think it would be cool to try and find that Page tone specifically for me. I love Jimmy Page's guitar tone. That is actually the reason that drew me to him even more than his playing style. So I'm going to sit down with you and we're going to go on a tone chasing journey. If you are a gearhead or would like to be a gearhead or get into this kind of thing, then this is going to be a really fun video to watch. And if you're like me and you like Jimmy Page, this will also be a fun video to watch. So there's two options when you are trying to match somebody's tone. First option is usually unavailable to us, which is buy the exact gear that said guitar hero, in this case Jimmy Page, owned and used. I don't know about you, but I don't have the funds to go out and buy a 1967 Marshall Plexi amp and a 59 Gibson Les Paul. I am going to show you a little gadget that's going to be our guiding light on this tone chasing adventure. So this is the interface that I use to record all the audio that you hear in my videos. It is the Apollo Twin from Universal Audio. In case you guys didn't know, I have a really great relationship with the guys and gals over at Universal Audio, so I want to show you how I like to use it when I'm trying to get tones for my videos. You guys are always asking me, how'd you get that tone? How'd you get that sick tone? And well, this is the answer. It's also, like I mentioned, going to be pivotal in helping us try and get close to Jimmy Page's tone. If you can't buy that vintage gear, access the vintage gear digitally. Now here's the part where you say what I used to say. Dude, plugins are stupid. I'm never going to use plugins. I use real amp. Analog, bro. I totally understand that sentiment, and like I said, I shared that view with you. So, for what it's worth, I want to show you why this is as close as you can get to achieving the sound of amps you will never be able to afford otherwise. And the geeky explanation here is that the internal parameters of the twin, things like impedance, gain stage response, etc., are actually being reconfigured to match the emulated Marshall Plexi. When I select the Marshall plugin in the Unison slot in the Universal Audio console here, it'll activate the Unison technology. Look, you can actually hear it happen. This orange ring pops up letting me know I've got the Unison technology engaged, and now I'm ready to start looking for that Jimmy Page tone. Now I've scoured the internet looking for information on just what Jimmy Page had going on under the hood in his guitar amps, but I found a lot of the same thing. You're never going to know. He sold his soul to the devil. You'll never know how he got his guitar tone. And if you try and match it, you will fail. And you will not even come close. Challenge accepted. Obviously, we know more about the guitars, right? Jimmy Page used Les Pauls. And my PRS SC245 does a very good impersonation of a Les Paul when I needed to. And it already has kind of a vintage-y pickup selection, so I have the tools regarding the axe, but we're going for the amp tone. Now, of course, for amps, Jimmy used a lot of different amps across different albums and live, but generally we are aware of him using a Marshall Plexi. But when it comes to all the tone settings and other witchcraft involved with the amp, we're pretty much on our own. So I'm going to be chasing after the tone that I consider to be my favorite Jimmy Page tone, which is like that honky crunch that he uses in songs like The Ocean and Immigrant Song, to name a couple. So we've got our Marshall Plexi emulator pulled up. Let's see what we're working with right out the gate. This is why I love this interface and these plugins. That feels like a freaking Plexi and it responds like it. There's no latency. I know, I'm a nerd but I just get so excited about these things. So moving on, I'm gonna take a listen to The Ocean, uh, the first lick in the song and try and get close to that tone. I'm gonna take you through the process and I can only play a few seconds of the song without copyright stuff. So if you wanna to listen to the full tune or more of it, then just go to iTunes, but I'm gonna play a little clip that I'm gonna be referencing for our tone chasing excursion. <laughs> Alright, so there's definitely some honk going on there, and based on what I've found on the internet, it seems like he would definitely achieve some of that extra honkiness by using his bridge pickup, of course. So I'm going to stick with the bridge pickup to find this tone, and I'm also going to start working on the amp settings. So 
it seems a lot of people were suggesting the presence on this particular amp would be cranked. And it's funny, the default setting for the Plexi, uh, it seems to have the bass on 10 as well, which was what a lot of people were suggesting Jimmy Page did, was boost the bass. So let's see where we're at. We had the presence over here. <laughs> Now let's go ahead and boost that presence and see the difference. That definitely made a difference. As if there's more presence to the guitar. Who knew? So I think there should be a little bit more bite, a little bit more crunchiness. So I'm going to experiment with boosting the volume, uh, both one and two on this amp. See if that will make a difference in the way this amp responds and give me a little bit more cushion for this riff. That's definitely helping in the badassery uh, ingredient in this riff. So I like what that did to the tone, but there's still, I think it could go a little bit brighter. It was really still still missing that honk. So I'm going to push the treble up to about 2 o'clock. See how that changes things. Let's take another listen to the lick though. I think we're still missing a very crucial element. <laughs> It's reverb. We are missing some really kind of roomy reverb. It's like a, a weird kind of slapback echo meets reverb. So I'm going to go to my channel strip here and find a reverb. I'll use this one. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got. I'm going to just go for a preset and kind of start sculpting from something that it think it could sound close to. So usually that slapbacky sound where you don't really know if it's delay or reverb, that's usually the sign of a spring reverb. Uh, so I'm gonna look through, and it's not a very big or long reverb, it's real tight. So I'm gonna just find a preset here. Let's try small circle plate. Well, that's not a spring, but we'll just, we'll just try it here. <laughs> It's not quite it. It definitely needs to be a spring. Let's try small dual spring. So you hear that? It doesn't really wash. It just kind of sits there. So I like that sound, but there's definitely too much of it. So we'll pull it down as far as the mix goes, right around here and maybe the room make that a little bit smaller so we can get that tightness. You know what? I think we've got it.
Well, I don't think we matched Jimmy Page's tone, but I think we proved the naysayers wrong and came close. Let me know in the comments if you think I was close or not close at all. Obviously, I'm not Jimmy Page and I'm not trying to be, but I just like playing homage to one of my favorite guitar players. I hope this was a fun little trip for you, coming down the tone rabbit hole with me to try and discover what makes Jimmy Page's sound so unique and awesome. Again, all it really matters is that you become your own guitar player and find your own voice, but it never hurt to take a little influence from some of the greats. So until next time, guys, keep shredding.